It's raining! And I need a piss! Ah, I need a piss so badly! <laughs> Hey, let go Mobo! Let go Mobo! <laughs> um, but here again, uh, let go Mobo session number three, I think it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in my car, it's raining, I need a piss. <laughs> um, yeah, how y'all doing? I uh, hope my last few videos have been useful to you. Like, um, I was kind of worried before coming out doing them because, like, recently I've been kind of having a bit of a dip, like, uh, I forget if I mentioned this in my, one of my previous vlog entries, but basically I've just been kind of very um, in my head recently and I've been thinking about a lot of things, I've been organizing a lot, uh, organizing a lot of things and just... Um, but recently I've been kind of tapping back into my essence and my sensitivity. Yeah, because at that period I kind of got slightly insensitive and I was just stuck in my head. So like, even when I was... Tr I actually did a few videos before these ones. Like, you might notice that I look slightly different from, like, my Axis of Perception video and, like, the one after that one. Uh, but that's basically because, yeah, I, I, I actually filmed, I actually did the Light and Shadow video already, but, like, I didn't like it because it was just, I was just, like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I was just, like, it was devoid of passion and, 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 and kind of conviction and stuff, so, a bit wishy-washy. And even if it is wishy-washy, like, content-wise, I, I want it to be inspiring. I want my energy to be full and open so you guys can, like, you know, take it and... Take it, take it, you know? Um, so, alrighty. Uh, what should I talk about? Uh, yeah, oh, uh, it's Bo Jin Jin time! I actually want to start, like, using that as, like, maybe an opener or a finisher. Because I basically am on my vocal diary entries, like, I, I, I do this thing where I'm, like... It's another bo jin jin time. It's another bo jin jin time. Time to go absolutely batshit bonkers. That kind of thing. <laughs> so maybe I maybe that can be my new kind of like opening phrase instead of like "Hey guys, bo here," you know, like generic shit. Um, yeah, it's another bo jin jin time. Woohoo! I'm hyper right now. Um, yeah. So so actually, one thing I wanted to talk about, I could have put this in, a, in another kind of like serious vlog entry, but um, basically, like recently up in. Um, over the past month, I've been kind of listening to a lot of old music and stuff, <laughs> like, um, yeah, and uh, one example is, like, um, Brandy, the singer, the artist, uh, her first album I've been, like, listening to so fucking much, like, I've just been fucking listening to that, that, um, that album, and it's, like, it's so kind of symbolic of everything that I love about the 90s. It's literally like the iconic 90s album for me. But, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually did, I actually was going to do another Lego Mobo entry where I was singing Baby from Brand, by Brandy, but like, one, I guess I kind of chickened out for some fucking reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And um, another reason is because it had the song in it, so it could have been taken down. Like, there was a risk of it being taken down um, by, yeah, by Atlantic Records whatever but um yeah but what I want to talk about really is um, um is basically um I find that art art is very indicative like in in, in particular mainstream art is very indicative of how the overall energy of, the, of society is, like the overall kind of energetic emotional state of society, the collective emotional energetic state of society, right? And when I was listening back to all of these like 90s pop tunes, essentially, um, you know, R&B and stuff like that, like really soulful stuff, I realized that like, I realized that we're in a different era, like in this particular era. And that's not to say it's not, it's not gonna change, like definitely not, like that, like, my stance is, has been made obvious in my vlog entries. You know, like, I don't, I believe in, I believe in possibility. I'm someone who really believes in possibility and change. Anything that will happen, can, that can happen, will happen. And every, everything who has happened can happen again, is, is my mantra. But, um, mantra, mantra, mantra. Um, but anyway. Uh, yes, and I basically, I, I made the distinction between that era and... The, the kind of art that we have nowadays, right? And um, there's a lot more kind of amateur stuff. 
and I'm not necessarily saying that in a bad sense, even though, like, I, yeah, there, if I'm honest, there is a bit of me that's kind of, like, there's just so much, like, amateur shit nowadays, <laughs> but, um, you know, like, there's just too many fucking wannabe artists, and, like, the music industry in particular is, like, just oversaturated with, like, talentless fuckers, <laughs> but, yeah, um, that's just me, uh, but anyway, um, do you find that art nowadays is it's just very it's very kind of cynical, you know? It's very it's very whiny like the art nowadays, and it's very kind of like gritty and realistic and like like you know real life, you know that kind of thing. Whereas like when I was you know listening back to those, those kinds of things and just thinking back of the med- thinking back to the media that was in that era, like the nineties early uh, early two thousands, you know, it's just a lot warmer. Like, the vibe that I get from that kind of art is that it's a lot kind of warmer, more imaginative. And, like, people weren't so afraid to talk about, like, uh, think about kind of topics, talk about topics like love and connection and real, just like, yeah, you know, that kind of thing, love and connection things. Yeah, I'm a massive hippie, I don't give a fuck. Um, As I said, I'm, like, sensitive and I love that shit. Uh, But... Yeah, you know, um, yeah, uh, and it's just, it's a shame, really. Like, it's I, I feel that like people are kind of almost crying out in desperation in their art. You know, like a lot of people. Do. Well, for one, you know, I think the art industry is coming becoming a bit too industrialized. Like, it's just kind of like it's like art is is be- becoming like is becoming subordinate to business and money, and and that's not good, right? I mean. That's an overgeneralization, because I'm sure there's a lot of artists, like underground artists and musicians and people like that, millions of those kinds of people, billions perhaps, who are actually doing art that they enjoy and, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I'm, I def- I'm sure that that exists. But just in terms of mainstream uh, media and, and mainstream entertainment, <clears throat> there's just like this kind of overcrowding of, of very cynical, grit, like o- overly realistic uh, kind of art, you know, and it's, it's kind of a shame, you know, I, I'd like to see, I'm definitely going to be personally my own proponent of this, like, when, when I kind of, when I do more, mu- when I do more music and, you know, attempt to become, you know, become an artist, you know, um, I want to basically push more of this kind of, yeah, more kind of warmer kind of art style, I guess you could, you could call it expressionism, I guess you could call it expressionism. I feel that the 90s was very expressionalist. Like, it was just very kind of warm and imaginative and colourful. And it wasn't so realistic, you know. And, like, things don't always have to be so realistic. And I know I talked about... um, I actually mentioned this example in in one of my previous uh, entries. I think it was when I was talking about... Was it light and shadow or symbolism and energy? I think it was light and shadow. I forget. But, um... Yeah, I was saying how I, I'm escape. I'm an escapist. Like I've always been an escapist. But uh, but but then when I watch those videos, you could argue that like those kinds of themes are escapist. They're kind of fantasy oriented. Like theme, like whereas yeah, expression, expressionist or surreal, uh, surrealist. You know, like those kinds of themes. But really, like, they're not really supposed to be... When, when we basically judge those from, like, a realistic mindset, when we judge them as being not realistic, then that is kind of like a, a shadow kind of interpretation of that, basically. Where, in reality, yes, yes, that kind of thing can be escapist. Yes, it can detract, it can kind of distract us away from, like, you know, important real issues but I feel that the, the, you know it can also be done to to enhance to enrich enrichen enrichen enrich I don't know <laughs> enrich and enrich are um, basically our reality it can be done from a very kind of warm and loving place and it can really basically because when I listen to you know all of those old uh, yeah those old 90s pop tunes, you know, like, um, always on my mind, 
you're always on my mind. Oh, I love that tune by Brandy. Um, no matter how far and no matter how wide, I promise, baby, that I'll stay by your side. Yes, love it. Um, it's just, it's just so kind of. It just makes you feel so warm and bubbly inside. It makes you feel loved. It makes you feel that you're not alone, and it just heals you. And it's healing, and we need more art that is kind of healing, you know, in the mainstream. You know, we meet, we need more kind of artists who do that kind of thing, like, who kind of produce art that's very heart-centered and very warm and, and, and healing and bubbly and stuff like that. So to, to kind of push more t to, for mainstream kind of, well, to, to be more well-known, to get more well-known and, and to connect with one another and, and to collaborate and to do more art that's like that. Because I, I just feel that, you know, I, I, you know I, I like some gritty stuff, you know, I like... But even then, you know, I, I like gritty stuff. I like kind of very, sometimes morbid, macabre, uh, very, very dark gothic themes. Like, I've, yeah, some very, very dark stuff. I love that stuff. But even then, like, I think nowadays, like, it's a bit too sterile. Like, for example, like, the whole kind of zombie apocalypse, apocalypse theme. Like, it was cool when Resident Evil did it and, like, you know, like, original zombie movies and things like that. But now it's just been done to death. Like, I think it's starting to die down now. But, like, that, that scenario... You know, like the, live, the the Walking Dead and things like that. Like, I think it's just overdone, you know. Uh, and it's not it's not so much that it's overdone. Like, the, there's a movie that I watched. I forgot what it's called. But there's a movie where, basically, it's, it's actually a, a zombie love story. And I found it really cute and I loved it. And it was so different from the other ones and, I, and it really stood out for me. But it's just like, nowadays, like, those kinds of things, they're just a bit too sterile. You know, it's just like the same thing. It's not really much emotion to it. It's just like shock. It's just like dry, dry shock, you know. It's not really, there's not really, there's not really any kind of meat to it. There's not really any kind of emotional meat to it. Because even, even like a horror theme, or like a gothic theme, you know, it should, it should evoke, it should have that mood behind it, right? It should have the feeling behind it. And like, I think people are just overly obsessed nowadays with style and, and presentation and, and like, the surface aspects of what makes, um, something, something. Somebody, somebody. That's Christine Aguilera. Um, uh, yeah, I think I mentioned that all the way back in like one of my first vlog entries about how people just, um, yeah, it's just being insensitive to energy. Like people, they don't really, they're insensitive, so like they don't really, they can't really recreate the the emotion behind their art. So it's just very stylistic, you know. It's just. It's that, it's like something by, by name, you know, like a zombie film by name, because it has zombies in it. It's a romance, it's a romance movie because it has romance in it. Romance, you know, there's people kissing in it and they say, I love you. But like, the substance, the emotion, the energy, the, ah, ah, you know, the, ah, energy, like, <laughs> ah, you know, the, the emotion, you know, it, that's, that's just what I find is missing in a lot of kind of, examples of art nowadays and yeah I just wanted to rant about it you know and just if anyone's watching this it, it happens to be an artist or like you know that kind of thing then yeah you know I yeah you know hopefully this will kind of get you thinking as well and like if, if you if you yeah and not make you feel this if you're so alone I don't know what the fuck whatever I'm just rambling <laughs> um mm, what else can I do I could show you my armpit. Do you want to see my armpit? Do you want to see my armpit? Do you want to see my armpit? Tough luck! Tough luck! <laughs> um, yeah. I've been watching a lot of Russell Brand as well. That, that might be why I'm just kind of all over. But I feel that, like, yeah, yeah. There's aspects of my personality that kind of are similar to his. I'm a bit more kind of introverted, I guess. But, um, yeah, Russell Brand's a cool guy. Um, I feel that he's really moving places. And one of, one of the things, I don't know if I mentioned this before but my overall plan i might as well just say now my overall plan is you know yes i want to help people by giving like sharing ideas and, and basically being myself you know showing others so they can do the same i want to help people this way i want to be an artist i want to make music um i want to i want to do loads of things but like one thing that i i want to i want to basically contribute towards is basically improving our society um, I really want to get involved with this, and like Russell Brand is someone who's really who's, who's really kind of passionate, really really passionate about that, and like I really I really respect him in that sense. Um, 
cheeky cunt, no. <laughs> no I can be as well, so whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you, Russell, if you're watching this, I love you. <laughs> I really want to meet you. Um, one of my mates met you. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, so, so, so yeah, you know, I really want to be involved in that kind of thing. And I, I feel that, you know, I think if people come together, then a lot of what we face in society, because there is an aspect of society kind of influencing how we are and how we feel and stuff like that. But I feel that if we come together, then we can basically collaborate. We can um, combine our ideas and we can inspire each other to basically make the changes necessary to, uh, in society, you know. Um, and, you know, it's not all doom and gloom, you know, like, every, like we could say, you know, a lot, a lot has happened you know, recently, like, we're on the brink of war and stuff like that, the Ebola virus, whatever. But, you know, I think, aside from all of the negative, there's also a lot of positive, you know, there's a lot to be appreciative of, you know. It's like, it's, sometimes I just wake up and I'm like, wow, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm so appreciative that I'm alive in, in this kind of modern, modern age, you know. I can speak to millions of people through, like, a camera. Um, potentially, I'm not there yet. But um, I, can, I can drive to a car park if, if I don't want to do something in, at home. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's so much information available to me, you know, at my fingertips, you know, the internet and stuff like that. And it's just... There's so much to be appreciative of in society. And yes, some of those things can be done for bad reasons. So going back to the whole symbolism v energy thing. Yes, some things, there are some negatives for technology or like money or government. But really, we, I think we, should, we ought to start focusing on the good, you know, just thinking of the good things. Thinking of the things that we're appreciative of, you know. Thinking about why some, you know, what value some things have, and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, uh, yeah so, so that's that's one thing that I really want to do, and I thought I'd share with you guys in this Lego Mobo session. <laughs> it's like a mixture of seriousness and complete sh fucking shit coming out of my, my mouth. <laughs> um, rainbows, technical of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, so that's one thing that I want to do, um, social kind of change, like social improvement is, is something that I, I'm really passionate about, and one day hopefully when I've got the financial support and the kind of the clout, then I can basically be involved in that and, and help, help make the society a better one for everyone to live in, for our future generations. And if you are, uh, you know, if you're a young person watching this, I don't know if I'm young anymore, I'm 26, but if you're a younger person watching this, then yeah, you know, go for your dreams, and if you have similar passions, then yeah, go for them. Be yourself, do what you love, you know, champion love, and accept darkness, you know, like, don't, don't spread hate, don't spread, like, self, self-hate, you know, don't s spread suffering, essentially, you know, accept, accept the darkness, uh, but also embrace the light, champion the light, champion love and uh, yeah you know there's a lot to be uh, to be positive about as much as much as there is stuff to be negative about but you know it's, it's all it's all life you know this is life this is life this is existence this is it this is it cool well I'm gonna stop rambling here because it's gonna be 20 minutes soon but um cool right well uh, yeah I'll be making more videos soon because there was a delay in this one um, in this batch but um cool I will be back soon and have a very pleasant Day and I will see you soon. Peace, Bojinjin. <laughs>